What's up, Tesla nerds? I'm gonna help you out on this one. Uh, this is coding. So if you haven't watched the other parts of the series, step one uh, was to do the decon process. Step two was prep and polishing. Uh, step three is gonna be to add a layer of protection. Uh, and this will help you avoid uh, using weird crap on the bumper to get the bugs off. It'll help you, your wiper blades last longer. Uh, it will make your washing process much easier. It'll help with things like water spots and scratches and things like that. What it can't save you from is the automatic car wash. Uh, so uh, there's not much I can help you out there. We're gonna have follow up to the series to show you how to wash the thing. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to coat this. And uh, you could certainly pay a professional. If you don't wanna go through this whole deal, uh, you need to spend thousands of dollars on on products and tools in order to get to the, even get to this point. Um, but I would highly suggest you scrap the idea of just ceramic coating the car or glass coating or whatever you want to call it. Um, you're wasting your time. Uh, you need to do the other parts of the process in order to make this work. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you follow along with the other steps of the process and you got this far, this is by far the easiest part. Uh, it's uh, super, super simple. Uh, and so I don't think it's something you need to be afraid of as long as you're willing to take a little bit of time to go through it. So here's what you need to do it. Uh, first, you want to prep the surface. And so what I generally do is if you don't have an air compressor, you can get by. Uh, I generally don't want to wash the car if I can help it. I don't want ch the chance to introduce uh, water spots or scratching, um, but you could back the car out of the garage, rinse it off, blow dry it off, uh, and you know, and tr very gently dry it, but make sure you don't use anything. Don't use any drying aid or anything like that. Uh, but what I do, is I'm gonna wipe the car down, but before I do that, I'm gonna try to blow as much as I can off. So I take my air compressor, a little blow gun, blow out all the cracks, open up the door jams, blow all that out. So that's step one. Step two, I like to use, I just added this to my process. Uh, so I like to use CarPro Eraser in everything leading up to now. Uh, and so eraser is just a little more forgiving, not as aggressive, uh, but prior to coating, I like to use G-Technic Panel Wipe. So I think they both, uh, if you can swing it, they both have value in your, in your arsenal. So you saw me in other parts of the video using, uh, using CarPro Eraser to inspect my work and clean up the surface and prepare it for polishing. Uh, I also use it sometimes to remove the polish, uh, but then I'm gonna use Panel Wipe in combination with, uh, depending on how slimy the, uh, the glass is, some spray version of, you know, there's a Walgreens uh, isoprofile, 91% isoprofile alcohol. So I use that on, on the windshield and the side windows if necessary. So I'm using panel wipe and some pluffles, some really soft towels. Um, these again are my, what I call a waterless wash towel, but I do generally use these to prepare the surface. I want something soft, make sure they're nice and new. Uh, you don't want to scratch up all the work you just did polishing. So we need that. Then you need some gloves. Um, I wouldn't suggest that you go gloveless on this. A lot of stuff I don't use gloves for, but uh, when I'm doing this more caustic solvent-based stuff, uh, I generally want to want, want to use gloves. We're gonna need, uh, and I don't use the block as much, but you're gonna want uh, CarPro. I like Car the CarPro blocks because they have a little slit in the side, and I like CarPro suede applicators. Uh, many people will use microfiber. Uh, microfiber is a lot more, if you get like a microfiber sponge, it's a lot more efficient, it's a lot quicker, uh, but it also uses a lot more product and the stuff is expensive. I just feel like, you know, if you're doing this DIY, if you're not doing this professionally, speed is not like the main focus here. Uh, and so I like, I like to use a, um, a suede applicator. I think you'll need, you probably need about 10 of these if you really want to do it right because you will find some dusty, dirty spots and you'll kind of build up on the towel. Don't obsess about the build up on the towel. Just when it gets really funky, just swap it out and grab another one. Then we need our coating. 
Uh, I'm doing G-Tectin Crystal Serum Light. Uh, I highly suggest this. Uh, this is a 50 milliliter bottle. Uh, you don't need 50 mils to do a whole car about this size or Model S size or even Model Y size. You might use 20 milliliters at the most. So the 30 mil bottle that I have in my store is all that you need. Uh, and then we're going to top that with, uh, with G-Technic XO. Uh, you could certainly just CSL it. This is the actual coating. This is the glass or, or uh, this is a silicon dioxide based coating. Uh, you call it glass coating, ceramic coating, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this is a silicon dioxide based coating that you can um, use as your base coat. This will not bond to itself, so you can only put one layer. But then, uh, I'm not sure what you know, sort of silicon dioxide difference is. Uh, uh, G-Technic XO, uh, this particular product, uh, is a topper. Uh, so this is a product that you would put on top of the ceramic coating um, to give it a little bit more slickness, a little bit more uh, hydrophobics, if you will. Um, it does, you know, per G-Technic and per Kyle sitting over there, he says that CSL cleans is more self-cleaning. If you just do it alone, I say it's full of crap. I think this looks better. Um, so I do two coats of EXO, which is really what we're going to show you. But the application is the same. Same exact application. On the glass, uh, on this car, I'm doing, uh, I'm going to coat all the glass except for the windshield. You generally don't want to coat the windshield. You'll have issues with the wipers juddering. Uh, I just, I like to use a very specific product for that. Uh, so we're going to do Wolf's Nano Glass Sealant on the glass. And then you'll probably need about 10 of these towels. Um, I have green ones in the store now that are, I call a coating removal towel. I'm about to swap out uh, for these. This is a, I believe these are Korean made, uh, but this is a Rag Company Pearl towel in gray. Uh, just a little bit more, a little heftier, but super soft. I don't want big plush towels like this isn't even a super plush towel. I don't like plush towels for this application. I like flatter towels. I just feel like I have more control of them. So when, when I show you this application, I'm gonna do, you know, use two of them and then swap them out when we have to. And then you'll probably want some pipettes. I should probably buy these and have these in the store. Um, but uh, you'll want some pipettes to, to apply the product from the bottle to the um, so the suede applicator now, the EXO bottle comes with a dropper. The CSL bottle, I'm not sure why, but the CSL bottle does not. So let's show you how to do this. So I've already prepared the surface, so the process is pretty simple. You don't want to take panel wipe, which is super aggressive, and soak the whole thing down. You're going to treat two by two sections with panel wipe. Uh, so just, you know, they, they even recommend you spray it on the towel. I like to spray it on the panel, but boom, 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 wipe it, wipe it, and proceed. Uh, so be careful with panel wipe. Don't go crazy on it. Uh, same thing now. Now the same thing with the glass because panel wipe dries like that, like in an instant. Uh, so you don't want to get too. You don't want to do too large of a section and mess. You know, mess anything up. So I've already done crystal serum light, and I've done every single surface. I no longer use any kind of trim coating. I've got some stuff in the cabinet. Uh, I have the wolf stuff in there, and I've got Cerakote trim coat. Uh, but I find that the best coating product to use on trim is, uh, is the same stuff we're putting on the paint. Uh, so I've done the headlights, I've done all of the surfaces, all the plastics, all of the window surrounds, all of the stuff. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the top glass as well. Uh, I'm also going to show you, we're going to do the wiper blades, we're going to do underneath here as well. So I'm going to take, and you can choose how you want to do this, but generally on the big, larger panels is where I take and use the block. And I'm telling you, this is the, my favorite tool on the planet, which is the uh, 4140 skin wedge tool. It's called a skin wedge because it's designed to wedge on uh, and pull out and pry out the skin of an airplane, like an aluminum airplane. And uh, so it acts as a thumbnail. It's like your thumbnail, but only metal. And I use it for all kinds of stuff. Prying panels out inside, and then I use it for detailing when I, rather than using a credit card to get my applicator set up. Again, with CSL, you're gonna use the pipette. Uh, XO doesn't need one because it has a dropper, and this is an old bottle. Uh, now, the way I, 
I can tell, or the way that the way that I decide whether or not the coating's still good is if there's any funky stuff in there, like if you can see any any like um, crystallized coating that I don't use it, I throw it away. But if it's uh, if it's still um, still clear, then I feel like it's good to go. I used this the other day to coat some wheels. So the CSL application is the same. Uh, any coating application or most coatings, easy coatings like this to install, uh, the application is pretty similar. I put about yay amount of product on the applicator. That doesn't really make sense, yay amount. Where did I come up with that? And then I'm going to slide across the surface. Now, right now, it's super, super slick because I've done CSL already. But modern coatings, the reason why coatings get a really bad rap is that the original coatings were extremely difficult to install at times. You had to get your stopwatch out. You had to let it flash properly, but you couldn't really see it flashing unless you were an expert. And, and uh, now modern coatings, coatings now, are much, much simpler to do. You just simply keep yourself organized. Don't go too big of an area. You're better off staying small. Uh, with this particular product, I do it panel by panel. Uh, and so I'm going to do the whole hood. You don't need a ton of product either. Putting more on doesn't make a thicker layer. You're going to get the same amount of layers as long as you have even coverage. That's the key. As long as you have even area coverage, then you don't need any more product. And I like to cross hatch it just to be safe. So I'm going back and forth. EXO, you can even work it in the panel if you really want to. Uh, but I find that just doing a cross hatch pattern works well. Same thing with CSL. Now, what you're gonna notice here, I'm gonna have to wipe quite a bit more. When you do the first step, when you do Crystal Serum Light, uh, it comes right off in like a half a wipe in like two seconds. So you can see what I'm talking about. You know, you probably pick up some dust from the car sitting overnight uh, but as long as it's not heavy dust it surely doesn't matter you don't have to worry about it so I'm going to take my towels you can mark the towels if you want um, I don't I try to keep them somewhat organized uh, we'll probably need I'll probably need four towels to do this XO process XO is quite a bit thicker than CSL and we're going to push it around quite a bit more um, but I thought I might be able to get through the whole car with uh, with just two towels. So it's you know it says on the bottle that it's wipe on wipe off. You know a lot of uh, a lot of G Technic installers suggest that you give it a little bit of time to go to flash. Some people say you wait to see the lines of beads bubble up. I usually work one side of the panel, and then by the time I get to the other side of a panel, uh, like for instance, I'm going to do this fender. And then, uh, and then I'll start on the bumper, do half the bumper, then I'll come back and wipe this, do that, wipe this, do that, and kind of work my way around the car. But especially with a white car, you want to check your work. Where you can mess up, and it's, again, it's not, it's not earth shattering, you can fix it. That was another problem with you know, the, the original coatings, is they were so hard and so unforgiving that if you didn't level it like we're doing here, then you'd end up uh, with the potential needing to sand, you know, do some really significant sanding. I'm about to do a coating removal video on the Civic here soon, so stay tuned for that. If you need to remove a coating before this, we'll talk about that and how to do that. But it's really no different than just polishing the, polishing the surface. If you're doing a black or red or blue car, this process is actually even easier because uh, the problem with the white, it's like darn near, darn near impossible to see. The other thing that's super helpful with this EXO product, if you're going to do this on top of your CSL, is uh, it is nice to do it in a humidity controlled environment. If it's super humid outside, see I hit the wiper, so you need to make sure Make sure you, you wipe adjacent panels because you're going to push the product onto them and you don't want to 
end up with high spots. A high spot will look like an oil slick. It'll look, you'll see it. You'll notice it after it dries. Uh, you don't want a high spot if you can help it. So let me do, uh, let's do that other fender here and I'll show you about the trim and stuff like that. You don't want to lay your towels on the surface because then you could leave a high spot behind. The other thing you do is you check, get yourself a light out, you can turn lights off. You know, if I was doing this professionally, I'd probably darken the studio and I'd want to make it as efficient as possible. And so I'd have a few little handheld or head, head, head mounted lights, but for me here, kind of messing around in my garage. I'm not too concerned about it. And so I'll usually set up two applicators, one off the block and one on the block. You just prime it up here and then we go to town. So you can see, I mean, this is easier than waxing. The difference is, is that waxing is a lot harder to screw up or let eat. Yeah, waxing is harder to screw up unless you just put too much wax on and make it really hard to get off. A coating you could screw up and that you leave high spots behind. You know, like wax, you can just come back a day later and wipe it off. But with a coating, it's not as forgiving in that you might end up with something that you have to polish off because it is quite a bit harder. So notice I'm going right over the cameras, I'm going right over the trim. And then I'm treating panel by panel. So um, I'll do that whole side skirt after the fact uh, and uh, treat it as a separate piece. So that way you stay organized, you know where you've been, you know where you're going. You don't want to forget areas, both application wise and then wiping off. So because the fender is smaller and only took me a minute or a minute to wipe it on, I'm going over to my second fender and applying here. Same process for all, almost all coatings. All easy to apply coatings. There are still some ones that have all kinds of quirks and problems. I'm not interested in that. Now you're not going to get the same longevity out of this as you would out of a harder pro coating, especially if you're up and up north and you're dealing with salt and cinders and stuff like that. But I find that if it's a car you care about and you maintain it, you know, you're going to get a year to two years out of something like this before it's time to decontaminate again. But forget the whole five year, 10 year, 15 year, whatever bull crap people are telling you, that's nonsense. Coating might still be on the car, but the car will be all scratched up and marred up and jacked up looking. You still have to treat this, and we'll talk about this when we get into washing, when we start talking about how to, how to maintain this after we've done all this work. Um, you still have to, and, and actually in many ways, you have to care for it even more than we did before it was coated in order to keep it looking nice. But it's still going to mar up, it's still gonna end up with scratches and imperfections over time that we're gonna have to go back and redo this process again. Uh, this is an infinite. This will need to be readdressed again in the future. But you can see I'm going right over the headlights. Careful with the headlights, because remember we talked about you can't polish the headlights, so you gotta make sure you don't end up with any high spots. If you polish the headlights, you're toast. You're gonna blow through the clear, you know, you know, you see headlights that are hazed over and um, yellow and problematic. Yes, you can repair that or you can, you can temporarily fix it, but once the UV coat is gone, and it will never look the same. You could always re-clear coat them, but they're never gonna be as good as they were when they were new and maintained and cared for. Okay, now let me show you what we do to trim. Where's my phone? Let 
It's waking up the car. If you're not familiar, this is how you open the front trunk. The car's been sitting overnight. Come on. There we go. Yes. Open. So we got all this black trim and we want it to stay nice and black. I actually haven't treated this with, with um, CSL. XO is like the most amazing trim coating ever. Just because this is such a big area and it's not exposed to the elements, I didn't do two coats. So um, normally what I do like on all the trim, I'll do X, uh, CSL and then top with XO. But in here, I'm just gonna do XO. I'm gonna do two coats of XO on it. It doesn't shine it up, although it looks shiny now because it's wet but it won't shine it up. It'll just make it look nice, clean, matte. For longer periods of time, it'll keep it from turning ugly. And you can put this on rubber. You can put it on porous plastic like this. You can put it on glossy trim. You can put it on chrome. You can put it on pretty much anything. And the thing I didn't mention, we were doing the paint there. I'm not wiping off, I'm leveling it. So you don't need to go at it. You just need to make sure it's level, it's flat. So I'm not trying to buff it off. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying, I'm doing, I'm leveling the, the product. And we'll do the same thing to the plastic here. And we'll do it in sections. I'm also gonna treat the uh, inside of the uh, the jam here. You'll find yourself coating more and more and more stuff as time goes on. So the question is, do I coat all of this? I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna do just the perimeter here. And I'm not caking it on, just putting on a reasonable amount just enough so that it still looks uniform but I mean I'm telling I mean, you can do this this is freaking easy it's the easiest thing in the world maybe not in the world but there's a high easy factor to this if you're concerned about getting high spots and having to repolish, just take your time and don't do, don't push it. Don't try to do too large of an area. I'm gonna treat the rubber seal here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe this now and then go back and wipe where you started and just flatten out any little shinier spots, which would be excess product. Just level it out. Make sure we get our jam that we put the product on and make sure we didn't push any product onto the fender. That's it, man. That's the process. Gets a little tedious when you're doing it across the whole car three times. So I like to wait overnight. So I did the CSL last night and it's 3 p.m. today. So I waited, you know, 16 and 17 hours, something like that to do my second coat. You don't have to but I feel like I get a good result if I prepare the surface well and if I let the uh, coating set up. I've never had a failure doing it that way. It seems to work very efficiently that way. So decon your car on a Friday. If it's your only car, start you know, tape it Saturday morning, polish it all day Saturday, finish your polishing, 
Oh, see, there's a high spot right there. Hopefully finish your polishing on Saturday if you can help it and get your first coat of CSL on. And then Sunday wake up and do all the interior and finish all the trim and stuff. So I'm gonna do the wiper blade arms as well. This stuff is okay. Some products you wanna close up the bottle, but I just leave the bottle and it seems to, seems to be fine. So we could put the wipers in service position, but I find that's probably not gonna help. So I like to do the wiper arms and then do all the area underneath. There's something great about having really clean, nice trim around the car. I want to avoid getting it on the glass if I can help, but it's not the end of the world. It'll wipe right off. I'm doing the top of the wipers. Again, you can get crazy with coating every single square inch of the car. certainly help make it continue to look good. I'm gonna do the door jams, I'm gonna do the trunk jams. I just did the front trunk jam. It'll make it easier to clean up and maintain and make it look nice long term. towels and go over it. This will help it stay nice for the long term. Make sure you get it off your glass if you got any on there. Again, I understand I could put the wipers in service position, but I think we got the job done without having to do that. Look at how good that looks. Level it out. See, it just turns everything just a nice, clean, treated looking, but not dressed. Nobody likes dressing. If you do, you need to change that because friends don't let friends have shiny tires and trim. Like Matt, but that's just your opinion. Well, call it what you want. It's just not right to have shiny crap. So you gotta be careful when you touch spots. Make sure you don't leave any coating like if you had something left over on your gloves. Come back and check the glass here. That's the only thing you gotta worry about. Don't leave yourself a future polishing problem. but it's not freaking rocket science. We're just slapping some crap on here and just making sure it's wiped off. That's it. Let's do the glass. So I decided on this car, you can put this stuff on your glass. I don't think it works very well on a windshield. I never tried, but I did all the other glass for the first time. Uh, I did the glass with, I don't want to wipe this off. The first time I did all my glass with CSL and XO. I'm gonna take a little bit of just a little bit of panel wipe. You don't want to use panel wipe in between steps. I just wanted a little bit of lubrication. But you don't want to you don't want to get your coating wet for a while. So you don't want to wet it down if you can help it. I just want to wipe the 
surface level dust off. We'll talk about more maintenance in the future here, but don't frickin' dry wipe your car if you can help it. I only know that it's okay to do that right now because it's super, super clean. The main reason I did this to the glass, one, I wanted to test out how it does, and two, it's much quicker than putting on the Wolf's glass sealant, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. So I'm gonna treat this one panel at a time. Doing a cross hatch application. Add a little bit more product. Stay organized. I'll report back to you on how well this does in the glass. So all this trim will be coated, 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 door handles coated. Uh, the only thing I noticed is that the door handles did shine up a little bit, but it looks okay. I hit it with the polisher. You, you could have taped it, but I figured that the, uh, the coating would probably add a little sheen to it. I did all the door jams and the inside faces of the doors. Uh, did all up under here. I'm going to do all that, the tail lights, you know, everything. Do the whole darn car. So then, see this black area will be a lot easier to see where you have product that needs to be leveled better versus white is a lot more difficult. But I'm telling you. There's nothing, the reason why I like this coating so much, this is gonna sound ridiculous, but there's nothing like running your bare hand across a super slick. This is one of the slickest coatings on the planet. Versus a lot of coatings will be tackier. Um, this stuff is very wax-like wax and sealant like, more sealant like. When you wipe a polymer based sealant off like, like PowerLock Plus from Jeskar, you end up uh, with a super, super slick surface that just, the Jeskar just doesn't last as long, not nearly as long. So you get that same slickness from this. And I find that the exo, this exo step on the paint gives us a little depth as well. it so we're gonna do that to the whole surface let me show you how to do the glass and we'll wrap it up so the glass process is a little bit different this is a nano technically sealant so it's technically not a coating I don't know what this is what is in this I import this from uh, Hungary I'm not sure if it's Romania or Hungary I think it's Hungary I think it's made in Romania but the Wolf's is in Hungary um, there's a language barrier there. So I put some product on the applicator. I'm gonna do this. You can do this to all the windows if you're not certain. One bottle, 150 milliliter bottle of Wolf's will last you years. But I'm gonna apply this in circles. This works extremely well with wiper blades and not having wiper judder or you know, issues there doesn't affect any of your sensors or anything like that. It won't, you won't even be able to see it on the surface. But this is, a, I call this a, uh, this, is a, this is a product that you use if you're a wiper manager. Those of you who have been around here a long time have heard me say this a bunch, but those of you Tesla guys that are new, you know, manage your wiper use. Uh, if you don't, you're going to blow right through this. You're going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to, your wipers are going to rip the, rip the sealant right off. It's not going to last very long. And one, one way to combat that, just apply it all the time. Just put it on once every three months or so. I usually get nine, 10, 12 months out of an application like this. And I'm going to do two coats, but I usually get quite a bit of time because I manage my wipers and you'll find that you don't need your wipers as much. But this product is not as aggressive as the beading 
and sheeting of water that you're going to get on the paint. I found that there's a lot of side effects to having water. Amazing water behavior comes with a side effect. And the side effect generally is your wipers don't work very well. And so I like this product because it doesn't fail and it doesn't streak. Even though it's not, uh, I wouldn't call it a world-class water beating product. This is a world-class functional product. It functions well in all aspects. And it doesn't smear up and fail like a lot of window treatment stuff does. It just lasts a while. Water behavior is good. And uh, that's, I think, its advantage. Disadvantage, it's not super easy to remove. Uh, and so what I use, waffle, le waffle weave towel that I use for all my glass cleaning, and I'm gonna spritz it with some invisible glass. Believe it or not, I think this is the, one of the best, if not the best glass cleaner on the planet. So I'm gonna spritz it a little bit. I find it doesn't affect the product. So I'm gonna use this with my glass towels to help remove the product. And then after your first wash, it'll be nice, nice and clean. Sometimes after the first application, if it's like foggy or dewy out the first morning, um, you may see your little circle marks, your circle application marks. That's okay, after your first wash, they'll go away. Pretty simple, right? This whole process, anyone can do it. Even a Tesla owner can do it. I'm just messing with you. I'm a Tesla owner, so. And so this entire process, to do it this way, you need some fancy stuff and you need quite a bit of things, but then you'll have it forever and you'll just replenish when you run out. But I've built an entire business and website, an entire existence around making this very complicated process much simpler for those who care about their car. And I know for many of you that have bought a Tesla, this is a lot of times, the vast majority of you is your first car that you actually care about. Uh, and so let's do this. Let's make it, make it nice. Make it freaking change your life and slickness. This is awesome. So I'll let that sit for, I don't know, whatever, however long I feel like it. You can't leave this sit on too long or too little. The only thing you can do is let it sit too little. Um, you want it to haze over, so I could probably wipe it off now, but I'll usually leave it on. I'm gonna go do the front bumper and then I'll, then I'll wipe it off again, spritzing a little bit of, of, the, um, of the invisible glass. And uh, you're gonna have to use some, use some elbow grease. You know, here we're just leveling this. You need to actually remove the product, so it's not as user-friendly, uh, but much, you can't mess this up, because three days later, if you saw some left, you could still wipe it off. Not the same with the coating. Uh, and then I think you want to avoid water for you know, a week, you know, week or so if you can, or at least a couple of days, at least 24 hours you want to avoid water with all this stuff. So that's the, that's the process. That's how we do it. So about the only thing I'm not treating are the tires, uh, but I would coat the wheels the same way you remove the wheels. I'm going to show you that when I get my aftermarket wheels and get these goof wheels off the car. Uh, no, I'm not selling these wheels, so they'll stay with the car in case I you know, sell it. Not in case, but when I sell the car and move on to something else. So um, yeah, next video will be interior. We'll dig into that, and uh, you know, hit me up, Matt at ObsessedGarage.com, if you need some help, or shoot uh, an email to support ObsessedGarage.com as well. Um, we're always helping people, you know, pick this stuff and I've built packages and uh, new my new microfiber 3.0 package is coming out soon. We'll be teaching you how to take care of your towels. There's a, uh, you know, I think we have like 1,500 videos on the channel of pretty much every resource. The Tesla's motivated me to start making some more uh, basic, some videos going back to the basics.
products. Uh, so we're not using basic products, we're not using basic process, but I want to redefine what you know, professional grade and how, you know, who has access to that. I'm gonna continue to, to chase that. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I'm gonna be in here for several hours, uh, putting two coats of XO. By the way, I do XO right back to back. So if you have questions, let us know, but thanks for watching. See you soon.